today because the Bible says there is no private interpretation. God meant what he said, and he said what he meant. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm grateful and thankful that we have members of this church has come up before me. If, if, if nobody else, I can tell you, Sister Susan keeps me in track. Amen. Well, a good time for you to say something right there, Sister. There we go. Amen. That precious sweetheart comes up after every single service. If she missed the scripture, she gets me to go back through my notes and writes it down. And uh, she studies it throughout the week. Thank you, Sister Susan. You're welcome. You get that word in you however you got to do it. And don't take pastor's word over that pulpit. You dig into that word. You make sure you keep pastor. Amen. And Lord, make sure I'm not teaching something. I'm veered off anyway. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Every one of y'all just said, oh, Lord, Sister Susan's going to get him now. <laughs> Hallelujah. But listen to me. Your eternal relationship and my eternal relationship has got to be so valuable. It's got to be taken so, amen, just it cannot be half-heartedly. you got to make sure you know the word. Paul was putting himself along with the others preaching the gospel. And he made this comment beyond just of what we are preaching, he said, he saw or an angel from heaven. Lord, have mercy. Please understand that there are angels that were cast from heaven mm -hmm. and they are very much at work in our day, in our hour today. So it does not matter even if an angel, it looks and appears angelic. But if it is contrary to the word of God, then you need to stand in the authority of that word and rebuke anything that is not of or alignment of the word of God. Amen. What he was saying, Paul was saying, I don't care if it's flesh or spirit. If it's preaching any other gospel unto you, then what which we have preached to you, let him be accursed. You want to think that this position that pastor, amen, gets before you and, and, uh, and, and that I don't take this serious? I don't want to curse on my life. I don't want to curse on my family. And I'm sorry that sometimes pastor gets passionate when the spirit gets a hold of me and I hurt your feelings. But I'm obligated. I am obligated yes. by heaven, yes. amen, to tell you I'm not being harsh or crucial, but if the Holy God and the Word backs it up, yes. then I am, a, I am bound by the Word of God. Amen. It is so important for how you and I speak and live out this gospel, amen, before others. I'm going to put it on you this morning, brothers and sisters, because everybody thinks that it's the guy holding the mic. It's the guy that has the title and pastor. It's his responsibility. No, every day you live, you are, amen, a representation of that word. This is what the Lord spoke to me this morning. He said, your life is preaching the message to others. Amen. It is the same as it is it as same as it was when it was first initially given unto you. No, you don't walk around with a title of a pastor or teacher or missionary, amen, but you are a representation of this word. You are supposed to be living not according to the UPCI manual. You are to be living according to God's holy word. This thought just come through there. Back when I was uh, I was working for uh, out in the oil industry, and we would teach a uh, a, a course called the API. It was 
all the major um, uh, all fields out in the Gulf, they would get together and they would govern how the operations of the oil industry, if you was a crane operator or a rigger or any type of uh, operation that went offshore, you had an API, which is American Petroleum Institute, and, and it determined what you was allowed to do and how you would do the particular job. Mm, oh God. And here, here what, what you, the, the uh, Betsy, which is a government uh, backing, they would come and fly out on that oil rig and they would do an audit and they will verify that you are in compliance with the API standard. The API standard is written off of incidents and accidents that has happened prior to. Now some of you work in the oil field, we understand that safety rules are written in, what is it? is written in blood. The whole reason why you have to go through a recertification is because somebody got hurt doing what you're doing and they want to alter it so it does not happen again. So the API sets a, a standard in which the company must abide by and if you don't, you're gonna get an ink. And that ink could cost you up into the thousands and millions of dollars if you are not in compliance. But Betsy does not just write you a uh, an ink on a API policy. They can also write you an ink because a of my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Because there is a company policy that might override or have more restrictions than what the API government requires. And if you're not abiding by what the company standard is, you will also get an ink. You just got to hope that the API or the uh, Betsy comes out there and he's a new guy and don't know your company's policy. I wonder how... God has established his word. And we, in this beautiful organization, which I love so dearly, and I wouldn't want to go anywhere else, but there is some things that maybe have higher the standard. Yet there might be some things you can might get away from. But if somebody else had to give their blood for because they got too close to an issue and they didn't take it as a safeguard and they overrided. Come on. Come on. Brothers and sisters, please don't look at the holiness standard that God has established in his word as rules and restrictions and as bondage. Right. Right. Thank God in his word. Yes. He gave us some good instructions yes. in how to live holy, yes. godly, and righteous. Uh, I hope that made sense. God, don't let me. Don't let me. Don't let me get so close to the edge that even the slightest little bump in the road that the devil will put there will cause me to fall. My dad today Amen. I was hoping he was going to be here, but my dad, amen, has fallen so many times, and one of his legs is six inches shorter than the other. And the last job that my dad had worked on, he fell off of a barge there in Trinity Marine in Madisonville. I remember the day when we were at home and we got the phone call, and we began to rush back to Covington to see how dad was doing, but dad failed. And dad failed simply because the company did not enforce the rules that was established according to the OSHA standard. And they were walking around a barge that was up on the dry dock and put no safety railings around the barge. 
And when my dad came up with a five-gallon bucket, it hit a man cover. And when it did, it threw him off balance. And my dad fell 18 feet and, and, and uh, crushed three vertebrae in his back. It took both of his ankles and literally the doctor said if you were to take cornflakes in your hand and close your hand and open it, that's what my, my dad's ankles look like. My dad lost the ability. My dad lost the ability to be able to function his feet or his ankles. And when dad puts that big old shoe on that gas pedal and you riding with him, you will start praying because it goes from zero to 60 in probably about one second. But because somebody did not follow the rule, did not be in compliance to the standard, my dad pays the price today because his body is in, in pain just about every single day. Please understand what pastor's saying. Please don't take the word of God as something that keeps you from something enjoyable out there in the world. There are some pleasures, but they're only temporary. I love what one, one dear friend of mine, Mitch Smith, said he, would, he was going to preach a message about the backside of the billboard. He said, because the front side of the billboard, it looks cool and it's awesome because, amen, the, the Marlboro uh, commercial is a guy riding through the water and splashing, he's on his horse and the rope's hanging and, man, it looks cool. But it don't show you on the back side of the billboard where people are dying because of lung cancer and because of uh, throat cancer and because of jaw cancer. I wish to God I had it uh, queued up here this morning because I'd show you what I showed our young people Wednesday night while I was not in here. Because there's two decisions, whether you realize it or not, there's two decisions you are going to have to ask and answer. Church, we have got to get back to the point where we allow the Word of God to help us answer those questions. What will you be known for? And who will you be known by? That was the two questions that I submitted to our young people. And Terry was a lady who, who was uh, at the age of 13, she took a cigarette and put it in her mouth. Not realizing that years to come down the road that she was going to become the spokesman of why you need to make sure you don't smoke. Terry got jaw cancer, and they literally had to take all of this and cut it out. She's talking out of a hole in her throat. The, vibe, the, vibe, the, the devil don't want you to see that side. And I'm, I'm afraid that we, we push the envelope because we just, well, you know, there really is no gray area. really is no gray area. And here's what I want to tell you. Brothers and sisters, if you're praying like you should pray, if you're living for God and you're wanting to please God, there should be a lot of things that you don't have to come to my office and ask, is yeah. this okay? Yeah. Amen. I don't know where that came from, but I'll add that to the notes on the next one. Because Paul was trying to get you and I to understand that we can't change the message, even how we live the message. Pastor, I'm not teaching Bible study. I'm not, I'm not the preacher. I'm not the teacher. I'm not the missionary. But you, you, you're speaking a message. Hello? Listen, we must all hold to the words written in this book called the Bible. The more that we live, the more we... The more that we live, the more that I see the Word of God being challenged and how it is preached in our current day, how it is followed, and how that it is being obeyed. And maybe this is why God has got your pastor in the last seven weeks telling you about 
getting back to the basics because God never changes and his word never changes. I don't care how many clocks. I don't know how much time has ticked away. One thing that remains, God is the same. Hear me today, this is something that is not, uh, uh, there is something that is not uh, up for, for debate. There should be some things in your life and in my life that is not up for debate. Yeah? yeah. There should be some things that when, when certain things are presented, there should not be anything that you have to sit there and just debate it. Well, could we, should we? We do not need uh, to even discuss anything that is contrary to the Word of God. It should already be settled. As soon as anything of the flesh or spirit tries to lead you away from the principles of God's Word, we need to identify what is not of God and of His Word. We, need, uh, we had better settle some things and nail it to a cross when we... Uh, entertain when we entertain things not of God then it will have an opportunity to find a spot to just hang out a while if you entertain things if you allow some certain things amen and I'm telling you church listen to pastor I have been troubled in my soul and my spirit because I understand the attack that the church is under and the people of God is under and whatever can try to be a distraction, many will be deceived in the last day. And I don't know about you, but I want to send a very loud and clear warning today. Don't be deceived by hearing a lie that is contradictory to the word of God. Here's what John said in chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth. And we quote this so many times, and the truth shall set you free. The word of the Lord says, and the truth shall make you free. How is that possible, Pastor? How is it going to make me free? Because when you get into the word and you really begin to dig into the depths of the word, it will make you be in compliance to the requirements of of that word. Nobody plans to go to jail. I mean, um, my wife and I, we did jail ministry for several years, and and uh, I'm in a, in, a, in a cell with about 78 guys in there. Not one of them were in there because they were uh, guilty. Not one of them. <laughs> they got it all wrong, preach. I didn't do that. They just thought I did that. <clears throat> Nobody plans to go to jail. Nobody plans to spend their life up behind some bars. Uh, but the thing that are entertained, if left uh, unchan unchallenged by the word of God, it will lead us from a thought to an action. Right. Ephesians 4, 27 and 30, neither give place to the devil. You and I are going to have to learn how to control some thoughts, some emotions, and actions in our life. Because whether we realize it or not, we might profess things, but are we living it out in our daily life? To say I'm a Christian, amen, and not have the attributes of a Christ-like spirit or attitude, it means that I'm just a replica. And then he said, he said, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Amen. So is the word of God important for your day of redemption? Yes, it is. I do not know why God has led me uh, where I am, and I've been teaching for the last seven weeks about the God that never changes. Maybe it's simply because we need to return back to the word of God and get back into our prayer closet until the word becomes formed in us and we become the very image of who Christ is. For if Christ be formed in you, you have the hope of glory. I ask you today, brothers and sisters, do we still have the living and alive word 
in full operation in our lives. Paul thought it important enough to say it again in verse 9. As we have said before, I say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you that we that ye have received, let him be accursed. The servant deceived Eve just at, by changing a few words and adding some words. Just five books later, we find from the scene of the, 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 the beginning where Eve and Adam is now eating the fruit. Five books later, God settles some stuff and, and we all know who is the one writing the book of Deuteronomy. Moses is now writing this book. God had called Moses to the mountain. Nobody was there. Nobody had knew. Amen. The beginning. So it had to be from God giving him divine understanding and revelation of what the beginning was because Moses is accredited for writing Amen. The first five books of the Bible. We find that Moses is now beginning to give some direction. And he is accredited for writing these books. According to the scholars, they say that it was Moses that began to give direction. Because Moses in Deuteronomy was about to transition. Amen. And his life on earth was soon coming to a close. Watch out, it's something that, that really stood out for me. God calls him to the top of the mountain. He begins to show him things in those 80 days that he was with him. And we understand that Moses has given the law. He's given all the things and how that they should do it and how to build a tabernacle and all the things. So Moses is recording and Moses is writing and and uh, I love it because I'm thankful that when God's speaking, somebody needs to have pen and paper. And you need to write it down. So he begins to give him uh, the writing there in Deuteronomy. And five books later here, he begins to tell him in his closing address to Joshua, Moses wanted to make sure to pass this very important information that he had discovered. Maybe Moses just wanted to make sure for the future generations to come. Don't be doing anything that you add or take away from what God has established for us to follow. Deuteronomy 4 and 2, here's what it says. You shall not add to the word which I am commanding you, nor take away from it, so that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I am commanding you. Why is Moses having to reiterate this to the children of Israel? Because he knew the first two people in the garden was given a commandment, thou shalt not eat. But because they broke the commandment, because they let somebody influence them by changing some words. And Moses just want to reiterate so that we don't have a, 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 another issue with somebody allowing them to be altered, amen, the word of God. Again, eight chapters later, Moses says it again in Deuteronomy chapter 12 and 32. Whatever I command you, you shall be careful to do. You shall not add nor take anything away from it. How many understands today that the word of God is settled. Yeah. It's not changing. Yeah. We will not ever uh, cause the word of God to conform to us. The word of God is there to conform us to it. We know, we now know the truth. M Moses and those prior to this of the writing of scripture, we did not know the, what it was in the beginning. But now you and I, amen, these 2,000 plus years later have been given the word of God to read, to study. And I hope to pray that a workman need have not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I hope in your walk with God you have a deeper understanding 
a deeper love and a deeper respect for the Word of God now than what you did when you first found Him. Anybody still love the Word of God? We now know the truth, so even that much the more will we be held accountable, amen, for what we now know. Another chapter later, he again begins to raise this word, and, and, and I, I need to hurry, so let me just continue on and read this to you. Deuteronomy 13, 1 through 11. If there rises among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and he gives you a sign or a wonder. And the sign of the wonder comes to pass. There will be some replicas in this last day. There will be great signs. There will be great wonders. But be careful that you are not deceived. Because he said when you see it in the desert, don't go run into it because it's just a replica. Stay with the original. And the signs of the one has come to pass, uh, of which he spoke uh, to you, saying, Let us go after other gods, which you have not known. Amen. That word, you have not known, means you have not had relationship with, like you've had relationship with me. God says, I proved to you who I am. The only reason why that your shoes never wore out, your clothes never wore out, and you never had a growly stomach at night is because I proved to you I am the true and living God, and you don't have to go look for nobody else. I am the Messiah, the great I am. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you to know whether... You love the Lord, your God, with all of your heart and with all of your soul. Amen. Sometimes the devil will, or God will, allow some deception to come knocking on your door to verify, are you still in love with him as much as you was when you found him? Amen. You shall walk after the Lord, your God, and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. Oh, boy, that's a big one there. Not too many people, amen, are willing to obey. Not a popular word in our society. You shall serve him and hold fast to him. How many of us realize that, that, that God, Jesus, and word are one and the same? We've established that. You got to hold fast to him. But that, but that uh, prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be what? Oh, Lord, have mercy. Yeah. Now, I know this is the, underneath the, the, the law, period. Okay? <laughs> Thank God. Because there will be a whole, whole lot of people, I'm afraid, in this hour. Y'all got any rocks here this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. But he should be put to death. Why is God so, so strong on this? Why is God taking such a strong stand when it comes to anything that alters the word or the gospel that he established? Well, let me ask you this, brothers and sisters. Would you allow in your marriage covenant relationship, would you allow your spouse to go and start having an affair with other people and you're okay with that? Then why in the world would God who gave his own life allow you and I to go a hoarding after other gods? Hello. And sometimes if we're not careful, and brothers and sisters, we, we live in a messed up world. Amen. And there's nothing sacred anymore. There's nothing that's, that's left in the boundaries. Amen. 
I'm telling you how. Let me tell you how messed up. I actually had some some people I knew. Okay. Between now and the 16 years. And they have gotten so far from the basics of what God's word requirement. They started dipping into things, and before you knew it, they were allowing some things that was totally against everything yes. of the word of God. Yes. 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 I hear you, Mama. Because I was about to go into a little bit more of that, but if you could just let your mind wander. And people listen to me. These are people sitting on a Pentecostal pew. That nothing is sacred. Because somehow or another the devil gets deceived. Oh, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Be careful. Choose wisely. Just because we're living in the dispensation of grace does not give you and I the, 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 the right to go out and willfully careful because the Bible says that my, your, your, his conscience can be seared with a hot iron. He will not always amen, convict you because sooner or later things entertain, it becomes an action. Yeah. And an action left unrepented yeah. can take you down a road. But a prophet or that dreamer shall be put to death because he has spoken in, all, in order to turn you away from the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of bondage. Amen. Anybody remember the day God brought you out of your bondage? Yeah. God did not bring you out to let you go slipping back in. That's right. That's right. Shut the door. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> to entice you from the way in which the Lord your God commanded you to walk. So you shall put away the evil from your midst. This is why God so, uh, so just so strong on taking a stand about things that could take you away from him. He's a jealous God. And he will not share his glory with no other. Be careful. Man, you've got to be in relationship. If your brother, the son, listen to this. If your brother, the son of your mother, your son or your daughter, the wife of your bosom, or your friend, who is as your own soul, secretly entices you, saying, let us go and serve other gods. Let us go and let's serve other religion. Let's go and let's serve other doctrines. Be careful. Let us go and serve these other things which you have not known, neither uh, you or nor your fathers. Of the gods of the people which are all around you, near you, to you, or far from you. It don't matter where they are or what's this new thing that's down the road. Oh, I, you know, it's better down the road. I mean, you know, they got better music. They got better preaching. They got better teaching. They got better facilities. They got better, uh, you know, they, they, I mean, I mean, literally that pastor, they, he pays the, the people times. Where that come from? <laughs> My goodness, who would not want to go to a church where the pastor pays their the members' time? Hallelujah. I don't know where that came from. But anyway. <laughs> Get paid to go to church. Hallelujah. You shall not consent to him or even listen to him. Hear me, church. I'm afraid we entertain things that are too enticing when we should shut it down and not give place to the devil. <clears throat> of gods of the people which are all around you, and he said, you got to get, you, you, wherever it is, get, get rid of them. Do not consent to him or listen to him, nor shall your eye pity him, nor shall you spare him or conceal him, but you shall surely
God. God takes a strong stand when it comes to people who are trying to deceive his people. Be careful. That's why the Bible says, touch not my anointing, and do my prophet no more. <clears throat> Be careful. And it's not just putting your hands on him. It's putting this on them. Yeah. Be careful. Yeah. Be careful. Yeah. Choose wisely. And you shall stone him with stones until he dies. My goodness. But God's all about love. We're supposed to love everybody. We're supposed to just, just accept whatever. You can come as you are, but you can stay as you were. <laughs> oh, Pastor, you've been on one. Lord, if there's a, if there's a lesson eight, Put your seatbelt on. <laughs> you shall stone him with stones until he dies because he sought to entice you away from the Lord. And he just told you whether your son, your daughter, your wife. I'm sorry, brothers and sisters, but there's people that's trying to live a separate life than what you're living. You might want to just change some friends. I'm sorry. But I am too close. You are too close to the coming of the Lord to allow anything or anybody. You love them where they are, but you are to pull them where you are and them not entice you to come where they are. You still have to be holy and upright, and you still have to live godly and pure, and you still have to keep your mind, your thoughts, and your spirit pure. You shall stone him with stones. <laughs> because he enticed you to go away from the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, whom the house from, and from the house of bondage, so all Israel shall fear, hear, and fear. I wish to God that there would be a, 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 a pure hearing that will cause a fearing. Not a fear that God's going to hit you over the head with a mountain, but that fear is a respect and a reverence yeah. to God's presence that is in you. And if we just dress up and look all holy when we come to the house of God, and Monday morning we put on a whole different lifestyle, we're in trouble. This was spoken under the under the law. And because there were many who came in to lead people astray from the truth and living, and, and the living God. God has called them out from the things uh, of this world to save them from the gods of this world. God brought you out to make sure you stay out. Don't keep dabbling back in it. Be ye holy as I am holy. God says, come out from among them, be holy. John speaks in the closing remarks of the book, of the books of the Bible in Revelations chapter 22 and 18. It's amazing because Moses began the writings. John and then Paul comes along in Galatians in the middle transitioning and now John, in Revelations 22 and verse 18, he begins to give us a deeper understanding is that you've got to be careful. Brothers and sisters, listen, I don't care how, how glitter, how much excitement. And I'm being very careful. And I pray to God that this church can, can do better and, and doing greater things. But everything that is glitter and lights does not mean it comes from God. Hello. Just because they got a, a bigger things going on down the road, but they don't have the truth. God, give me truth. And I admire you, precious people. And please just let me take a moment. I'm honored 
that you have chosen to uproot your family and come from another church and come here. And I refuse to give you a lesser than than what you are accustomed to and where you came from. God, give us wisdom. But when it comes to the truth of the doctrine, don't, don't let it be watered down here. Don't you get comfortable because you come to the P.O.L.C. And I pray to God that some of you get some fire, amen, on the backside. And you get some fire back down in your heart and your soul. And you feel some conviction when you walk in here. If you ain't living right, ain't doing right, talking right, amen, I pray to God that God stirs your nest up through your pastor. Man, God knows the true you. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Your private world and, and, and your public world should look the same. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Give me three minutes. I promise I'll quit. I know I'm supposed to be done at 10.25. Or 10.25. Thank you for giving Pastor five more minutes. Thank you. Oh, God, help us to live according to your word. If the word is what will judge us, then, God, please help us to learn how to live according to your word. Lord, don't let me just know the word, but help me to line my life up to the word. And Lord, help me to learn your precepts upon precepts. The whole word and nothing but the word. Going all the way back to Genesis, we find where, where Adam is now confronted by God. When he said to Adam, then the Lord said, then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? You allow certain things to come into your life that will get that will alter the word of God. It will cause you to begin to hide yourself. And I'll close with this. I, I, I know I'm not going to finish, but for the very first time, for the very first time, after eating of the fruit, the Bible says that their eyes were open. The words of the devil said that go ahead and eat it because God knows that if you eat it, you're going to be like a God. And you're going to know good for me. And when she saw that the fruit was good and desirable to have it, and she ate, and then he ate, and their eyes were open. And God now comes after the disobedience not following the word they go and hide themselves and the word of God says he said Abraham I mean I, Adam where are you now how in the world the God who is omnipresent who knows all things not know where Adam's hiding don't think that your sin is concealed because he already knows it whole reason why he said Adam where are you because he wanted Adam to take responsibility and ownership of his own sin we have eaten and then he said and here and I'll close with this he said he said I was naked and I hid myself and God immediately did you eat the fruit of the tree I told you don't eat What he thought, what he thought, was going to make her wise and give her be like a god. It literally stripped her of her god covering, and for the first time in their life, they saw themselves unprotected and uncovered by God's glory. Amen. For we were naked hit ourselves. Don't think that something didn't transition that day because of a, a disobedience, because somebody took one little word and 
and added some words and made it just a little bit more appeasing and it caused a forevermore change because their eyes were open and they were open to the fact that God's covering is no longer here. And when you are without God's covering and protection and love, you are naked. And you are free game for anything of this world. Great God of heaven, I thank you for this moment in time. For these last seven weeks, God the Lord, we have been speaking about the God who never changes, the word that never changes. I'm asking you today, Lord, let this, this word, I pray that we will go back to this teachings, God, in these last seven weeks, and we will replay them throughout the week. God, don't let it be just a one-time word where it only tickled me for a moment. It only convicted me for a moment, God, but let this word become a burning fiber down the side of our, an amber down the side of our soul. God, that I will never forget, Lord, that I cannot let anything change from the original what you created the church and your bride to be.